how to build a massive open source spin coder. You're gonna need the parts you see in this picture. The first step is to compile and flash the ESP32. To do so, we have to open the Arduino file and then make sure we have the Expressive board manager installed. You can find this address in the description of the video. Then we will go to Boards, Boards Manager, and we will install the ESP32. We will select the Dev module. After we plug our ESP32, we will select the COM port. Next step is to copy our Nexion library into the Arduino folder. As we see here, we already did this step before. Now we have to solve the other dependencies. We go to the library manager and we install elapsed milis and the PID library. Now we are ready to compile and upload the firmware. Next step is to flash the Nextion display. We only need to copy the precompiled project in our Nextion folder to our micro SD card. Then we have to install the micro SD card in our Nextion display and we are going to use the ESP32 to power the display. So we have to connect the red and the black cable to 5V and ground respectively. Then we have to power the ESP32 and wait for the display to flash the firmware. When it's finished we can remove the microSD card and reboot to check it's working. The next step is to flash the ESC with the latest BLHeli32 firmware. We will need to download the BLHeli32 suite and prepare the Arduino Uno as flashing device. We select our Uno port and the corresponding COM port. Now we have to connect some jumper cables between the Arduino Uno and the ESC. One is the ground cable and the other is the signal. The signal cable connects to pin number 11. And now we have to power the ESC. We can either use a lab power supply or the one for our spin coder. Now in the software we have to choose the USB COM option. And make sure the COM port is the correct one. Now we connect and we read the setup. It's important to install the 32.7 version. Newer versions of the firmware will cause instabilities. Once it's finished, we come back to the ESC setup tab and we read again the parameters. We will increase the beacon delay to avoid having the ESC beeping after some period of inactivity. We can also reduce the volume and switch off the LEDs. Finally, we will write the setup and disconnect. Congratulations, you're done with the flashing of electronics. Now we can start putting together all the components. We will start with the power plug. As you can see in the video, it's very useful to pre-tin the cables and the pins. 
Then with a multimeter we will make sure the polarity of our plug matches the polarity of our power supply. After securing the power connector, we will solder the DC-DC. And then the ESC power. In our case we have an adjustable DC-DC, so we use a multimeter to make sure the output of our DC-DC is 5V. Before installing the display we need to cut about 25cm of cable and then solder it to the back part of the connector. After adding the connector, we can secure the display in place using M3 bolts. Now we can solder the display to the DC-DC. It's time to install the ESC, the motor and the ESP32 in place. Pretending the ESC solder pads might help to solder the motor cables. Note that the motor sits in a specific orientation. To secure the electronics, we're going to use some hook and loop adhesive tape. When everything is in place, we can connect our ESP32 to the ESC and the display. Before powering everything, make sure your connections match the schematics. We can finally install the housing and secure it with M3 bolts. Next step is to install the heat inserts in the motor shaft. To do so we will use a soldering iron. Try to keep the inserts as flush and vertical as possible. To install the rubber feet we will use again M3 bolts. We are almost done. 
Now we only have to prepare the lid. We just need to remove the protective film for the plexiglass and press fit it into the frame. To attach the lid to the housing we're gonna use 20mm long M4 taper bolts. The last steps are to press fit the shaft adapter and to install the vase. 